Hello everyone, Wangel here, and welcome back finally to the Empire Campaign for Mortal Empires. Now, as I talked about in the last episode, unfortunately I wasn't able to continue the campaign with the mods being updated and the new update to the game itself last week. So, I've spent the past couple of days rebuilding the campaign, so we're more or less where we left things off last time. So, there are going to be a couple of changes, which I think is worth me spending a couple of minutes just going through. So, you guys are up to date with what's happened in this playthrough of the Empire campaign, or I should say now the Reichland campaign, thanks to the updates, before we actually get started proper. So, for the most part, some of the major events that happened last time have remained the same. So we managed to take back Marienburg and the Wasteland, as well as defeat the Vampire Counts in Take Sylvania back. Volkmar the Grim is still the elected Count of Sylvania, as requested, and we still got Heinrich van der Salfen in charge of the Wasteland. Now, the only major real change is if I zoom out actually and go onto ownership, you'll see that we've had a little bit of uh, change in what territory we have own. Talabekland is a province we've recently confederated with, but before that we managed to confederate with Ostland. And surprisingly, what ended up happening quite early on in the campaign is that we had a orc tribe. I can't remember the name of them. But they came up through here, they managed to take Fort Sol and defeat the Golden Order pretty early on. So we have had Balthasar Geld for quite some time, although I've been reluctant to use him. Because, as I said, I wanted to try and do something a bit different from most Empire campaigns and use Volkmar the Grim instead. So he's just been sitting around up in Ordorf for the moment, not really doing much, although I think I will start using him now. But we, they defeated the Golden Order, the Orcs did. It was one of the Savage Orcs. I can't remember what their name was. But they um, end up coming into Visseland, taking the two minor settlements here at Dottenbach and Wissenberg, before laying siege to Null itself. Now, what I ended up doing, I thought I'd take the opportunity because the fealty of Null and Visseland really doesn't go up that much, in the previous playthrough at least. So I ended up just letting them take Null, and then I came in, defeated them, and took back the whole province means we under we have the control of Visenland, although the faction itself still exists somewhere on the map. So Esper von Draken is still leading an army somewhere. They have no territory, but they do exist somewhere in the old world. So we may come across them at some point, but I don't know when. But apart from that, everything else is relatively the same. Like I said, we've taken Sylvania back over here and we're rebuilding it. We have Ostland and Talabekland. Talabekland I'm now changing like I did last time to make it more of a recruitment area alongside a bit of Reichland. Although I may be swapping some of the buildings over so we can start making Reichland into an economy powerhouse. I have also taken on board quite a few ideas about using halberdiers a lot more often than spearmen and things like that. So most of my armies have been extremely well done considering, and I've made sure to name all the units up to this point. We are currently recruiting, if I go back up to here, we've got Helmut Führer back in Kappenberg, currently recruiting a few more units here, and we've got Valmir von Rakoff, the Count of Osland, Still recruiting a final few units here. We are using Halberdiers and Spearmen because he actually provides the death blow ability to all of them. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to use these instead of swords. Make it a bit different and thematic. But we've got them two recruiting, but everyone else has had their units named. And I've used pretty much all the ones I can use from the submissions from you guys. So if I pop over to, for example, what I'm going to do, I think, because we have new units for each army, that starting next episode, I'm going to take a beginning of the episode just to go through the units. But just to showcase an example, if I go over to Heinrich's army here, he's currently resting up because we've had to go off and I decided to do one of the Mystery Island quests, and I think he actually fought something else recently. Oh no, he fought an orc incursion here, that was it, because we've got Green Death. That's it, he fought Fograd's bigger git. And so that's why he's replenishing a bit. But if I pop onto here, we've got the Broken Beak Butchers from a previous fight that we actually had with Malagor the Dark Omen. So we've got units like these that were recently submitted, as well as the old favourites like Jean-Peter von uh, Suchtelen, Heinrich himself, and Victor Wolfsaber. But I'll go through all the units properly at the end, beginning of each episode up from now on. So with all that said, let's actually get into the campaign, shall we? 
So Heinrich is currently making his way down to Einhardt's because we need to recruit a new unit of halberdiers to replace one of the Broken Beak Butchers. Volkmar has recently defeated uh, Kazrak, I mean Skarsnik, and the Crooked Moon Tribe. So unfortunately I gave it back to the wrong uh, dwarf hold. Gave it back to Karak Ziflin instead of Karak Norn. My bad. But he's currently replenishing and we're eventually going to be sending him off, I think, with Heinrich to go after Heinrich Kemmler. Just because he's starting to spread vampiric corruption into my provinces, I don't like that. Before we do that though, we need to let Heinrich von van der Selfen, too many Heinrichs now. We do need to let him have a chance to replenish, so what I'm going to do is send Volkmar off after these rebels. These are not because of public order issues, they just spawn in because of one of the mods I'm using. And I have changed a couple of the mods, so I'm going to have to remember to do the mod collection in the video description to reflect some of the changes, because we're not using as many as last time. But let's have you go after them, Volkmar. You will still replenish along the way. Okay, Vincent Van Howe, you're some of these are just boosting up the... Uh, ooh. Oh no, this is Gertrude and Felix, leave them alone. Yeah, we've got some agents just going around because they've got the ability, if I click on here, Noble. So they're not only making things a bit cheaper for us to build, but also increasing income a little bit. So it's quite handy to have them around. We've got one here. We've got a Gold Wizard with the same skill down here. Uh, Kurt, uh, put Kamen. So yeah, just leave them to their jobs. Calfanzo, he's over here. Because this time around I haven't actually finished the Gamoraz quest chain. We're still at the bit where we need to go after some of the green skin armies. So what I'm going to do, because this is really the only one nearby without us going into the Badlands, is for me to actually try and sack Karag Ungor a couple of times. We could defeat the armies as well. But I want to do this and then so we can actually take it because they've got a gold mine here. And that's really going to help our income out quite a bit. So let's switch you back over to this. And oh yeah. I've got, you may be wondering who this one is. This is Guinevere Dion Dene. She is a character from a Warhammer Black Library series. I think it's called Guinevere, but I could be wrong. But she's a, you know, lawful character in the Warhammer world. And this is one of the characters introduced by Why So Furious Additional Lords and Heroes. Now, he did include a bunch of them for the, mainly the undead. So, for example, Musilon would have had the, what's his name, the Black Serpent. I think it would have been um, Leon Kerr's son, if I remember right. But it would have also had ones like Zacharias, the Everlasting, who would be spawning with the Neckark Brotherhood down to the south. But, very cool. I've decided to use her instead of Alistair, for the Jade Wizard from last time. And she has quite a few of her own points, in fact, if I just showcase quickly. We've got, you know, she's got quite a few spells down here. Her own personal spell tree. Stormcall has turned out to be very good. A couple of her own personal stats. And she's got a number of the undead ones. So we've got the Hunger. We've got Immortal Will. She's been given immortality, finally. So she doesn't start off with that. I had to get her up to level 20. But very cool. But anyway. Let's get you back to normal mode. And we're going to go after. Can we go outside and fight the army there? We cannot. Okay. Let's go after Karagongor, declare war. Should be a nice, easy fight. But to start things off, because they do have an army inside and they do have the garrison and that. What's the balance by like? About 50 50. You know what? I'm gonna fight this myself. We'll go down, we'll sack the place, see how much it counts towards the free battles I believe we need to win against the greenskins, and then we'll go from there. So, see you guys in just a moment. Okay. Here we are at the gates of Karak Ungor. Now we start off with a large amount of magic straight away thanks to Guinevere. So I'm just going to go ahead and start deployment straight away. And how are we going to do this? What I'm thinking is that we send most of my infantry to climb the walls right here. We've got a couple of units like we could send Guinevere for example because she has got quite a massive level of weapon strength. As well as another unit in order to try and knock down the gates here. We can send Helborg's Finest to my Demigriff Knights with Halberds in order to attack this one. In fact, that will work out, and then it gives me an entrance point for the Emperor's Shields, too. So if I stick you guys here, that's your job there. Calfranz can just go in and disrupt everyone riding on Deathclaw, so you can just stay where you are. Everyone else, let's go out. You over to join the Swordsmen. Tell you what, let's just shift all this about a bit. In fact, instead of using the Great Swords on the walls, like I was planning to. Let's actually shift you guys, oh no, we'll keep the Karenberg. 
Why? Because we can use you to actually knock down the gates as well. So we do something like that. Spread everyone out a bit, a little bit more this way, please. Thank you. Alright. Ranged units can form up back here. You're going to be shooting everyone. Cal fans, you're going to be leading the way. Guinevere, unfortunately, it would have been much better if I actually took her off a horse. But just so I can showcase the model. There she is. In fact, if we move that out. She looks very cool. Very sort of, you wouldn't think she was quite a, the deadly threat that she is. But it's very cool. And I like the fact they actually used the proper horse for her instead of, uh, you know, one of the nightmares. But anyway, let's put you here ready to knock down a gate as well. And then Fritz Needler, my warrior priest, can join up then with the infantry here. Oh yeah, I was wondering, why aren't you the same colour as these guys? I remember, they're a different unit. Okay, and Otto's fixer uppers. I'm going to put you guys slightly forward, because I want you to be able to shoot at the enemies on the walls. Start the battle, pause a moment, and let's get everyone moving. So, so you guys are going to be making your way up onto the walls, like so. Ranged units, I'm just going to move you guys forward up a bit so you can actually shoot at the enemy on the wall. Cal fans, now let's have a quick look because I did see, as we were loading up, that the enemy has got some trolls we can see back here, but they also had some black orcs, some squigs I can just see over here, and they had a rock lobber somewhere. I'm a little bit concerned about that. What we got here? Big uns? Uh, ah, here it is. Oh, right, Savage Orc Great Shaman. Right, Cal fans is going to go and chase them down so we can eliminate the rock lobbers. And I'm going to use Foe Seeker to make him a bit faster. Fritz is going to head up, just because I'm going to have him climb up the walls as well once someone's put some ladders down. You two will go down and smash the gates. In fact, one unit. You guys come and smash the gates. Fritz, you're going to come over to this point. And then we'll have Helborg's Finest, named after the Reich Marshal and his finest men from the Reichs Marshal, you know, Reichsguard. You guys can come here, you guys can stay where you are. They are going to get shot at a little bit, but I think they'll be okay. That should be everyone. Alright. Otto's fixer up is already starting to fire, that's good news. Reinforcements are coming in from over there, but I'm really not that concerned. And, yeah, just blast them. Alright, you will start again fired on in a second. Cal fans has been shot at already, but that's fine. Like I said, I want him to go after the Rock Lobber first, and then we'll try and go after the Great Shaman afterwards. But that should eliminate them from trying to damage my walls a bit. Okay, here comes everyone else. Can you start stop firing? Not yet. Okay. Let's move you guys a bit more forward. Nice shot. Right. Fortunately, we haven't got really much we can do by healing, but we do have some powerful magic at our disposal with uh, Guinevere. In fact, if we pop over to her own tree, we've got Shadow Clo Cloak, which will allow us to actually hide, but we've also got Stormcore. And this is a fantastic spell. It costs a bit of magic, and we can't make it any cheaper, but watch the effect. Look at that! The only thing is, it didn't actually kill anyone. <laughs> That's disappointing. No matter, no matter. Right. Can we have you guys knock down the gates as well? Or does it have to be just one unit at a time? Okay, I may actually just get you up on the walls instead. But, okay, you guys... Okay, sure, you do what you need to do, my friends. Alright, uh, you guys are going to come... You're going to climb up there, Fritz. Okay, gold breakers are making their way up, but there's no one here, so that's great. We'll have you swing around. Oh, Christ, you're heading all the way over here? Okay, I didn't expect that. Victory is already in my grasp, though. Great news. Gage is already at 51% damage. Cal Ferns is just having fun over here, isn't he? Let's boost up his stats just to make him a bit more deadlier, and I'm just going to leave him to it. He can really provide a nice distraction while we just go after the rest of them. Okay, Otto, I'm going to ask you to start firing on the squigs down here. Just so you're not hitting my own men up on the walls. Okay, Fritz, are you nearly up? You are? Great. Uh, let's improve your damage resistance and let's have you go after that big boss. Alright, in fact... Yeah, you're going to defeat the big boss. 
And then boost up everyone nearby as well with your battle prayers. Okay, here we are. Camber Great Swords, 76% done. Great news. Alright, and then this is nearly done too. So, Calfans has provided a nice little distraction over there. And we'll be able to get both the Hellborg's Finest and the Emperor's Shields to charge in and attack him from the rear. So, that's really going to help us out with our attack abilities. Alright, enemy gates have been destroyed already. Great. Okay, then, guys. Let's get you charging in. Got some Night Goblins here. Oh, and some Fanatics. It's going to do a lot of damage to their own troops, isn't it? Well, let's just get you guys to charge in. Oh, I love Demi Griff Knights. They just look so cool charging in like this. Okay, I tell you what, you guys go. Okay, a bit anticlimactic because I just changed their target so close. But you guys can just slaughter. Hang on. Uh, that's not right. Why are you telling me that the Night Goblins are winning easily against them? That's not right. Ignore that. Okay, Guinevere, you can go and have some fun now against the Squigs. You should be able to take these out fairly easy. And we've got the Camber Greatswords provided in some boost as well. Okay, Otto, stop firing for now. Right, let's start moving these about. Swordsmen and Halberdiers go after the Night Goblins. Okay, Camber, I mean, Sterling's Valor, come down here and go after the Trolls. You focus on going after these. You go after the Black Orcs. You push over here and deal with the Night Goblins. Fritz, provide a bit more of a boost and go over and help against the Black Orcs. Okay, Guinevere, let's see how we can help out a bit if possible. Okay, let's do... Oh, can't do another Storm Call. Okay, in that case, slow things down a minute, just so I can get the spells right. Okay, Riverin, not really too concerned about that armor. Yeah, because they've only got 5 armor, Trolls have got 15. So let's just reduce your combat abilities. Right, you've cast that, great. And just to help things out a bit, let's do an area of effect spell, so everyone causes terror nearby. That should really help boost our uh, chances up a bit. Then, you guys are going to defeat the Black Orcs. We've got Nala over here. Sterling's Valor, why aren't you actually doing much? Okay, you can deal with those. Go over here and defeat those. Sigma Sons. Right, how are we doing? Oh, Christ, my Emperor's Shields really had their numbers done. Okay, let's bring you guys down here to defeat these. Come fans, I'm boosting you up again. Right. Night's Guard, pull you back out. Do you realize you were suffering that much damage? Jesus Christ. Okay, never mind. Victory is now mine. Okay, in the battle straight away. Decides the victory. Quite happy with the efforts of my men. So let's go back to the campaign map and decide the fate of Kamagungor. So, very easy to decide the victory. A lot of kills by Cal fans, as you can expect. These did a pretty good job as well. Very nicely done. But, let's do this. 12,000. Sack it. <laughs> That's the plan at least, because what I'm going to have to do now is check the quest chain. So, we'll skip through this. Go on to here. Gamoraz. Oh, right, I counted for two battles instead of one. Okay, so all we need to do next turn, unless we can do it now. No, we haven't got enough movement. What we'll do next turn then is just go after Karad Ungor, defeat the garrison, take it then, and that should account then for us completing the quest chain. So we can do that, and as you can see already, we've still got a battle to do with Balthasar Gelt. I'll be doing that eventually, once I build him up an army. And we still got the same part we left things with Volkmar, where we have to go for the Kislev to get the Jade Griffin. But I've decided this time not use the mod because it just bugged me. The amount of times I had to go and click, 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 click in order to get through. And all the quest markers still around on the map. So if we don't get it, we don't get it. I'm really not that fast. We can always try and give him something similar. If not exactly the Jade Griffin. We've got to recruit a Lord. Now that's something I did want to check quickly. In fact, let's go back to... Orddorf, because that's where Balthasar Gelt is currently just sort of sitting around by himself. Now, if I pop onto the Elect Accounts tab, you can have a look to see what's going on. Like, apart from Midland, who's about six at the moment, everyone else is quite happy with me. 
And since we've actually taken Kallenberg after a rebel army burnt it down, I should be able to actually buy the rest of Midland if I really wanted to. But I don't know what's going to happen with Boris. Because obviously we're not confederated with him, so he just might be leading a rogue army sitting around the map again, very similar to Visseland. So I'm not too sure if I want to do that, but I have decided now to actually confederate with all of them and take the entire empire under my fold rather than just focusing on the southern regions and let the north get on with their own thing. But uh, what was I going to show? Yeah. So Balthazar Geralt is now the elected count of Visseland, which I thought made a lot of sense, given that he is the patriarch of the Golden Order, right, you know, the Gold College, meaning then that uh, they work very closely with the Engineers Guild, so I thought that was just fitting. We haven't got anyone yet for Solent, but I've got a character in mind, I just need the right general to be able to be recruited, so I'm going to ask, let's go and recruit Lord. I'm looking, as requested by the submission, the, guy, the viewer that submitted it, I'm looking for a general of the Empire who doesn't have a helm, who has a helmet on so you can't see his face. And I've got plans for that character, but unfortunately we can't recruit one just yet, so we're not going to do that mission. No matter. Although in Ordorf, I need to, yeah, upgrade this to a tier 5. That should allow us to finish off some of the buildings and get the final landmark building, as well as be able to increase the this to the Colleges of Magic, finally. But you can do that. Kamenberg is fully upgraded. I have, this time, gone for a lot of garrison buildings, so all the minor settlements have got walls. I have to admit, it's not really something I tend to focus on all that much, I'll be honest, but I figured it would be a very good idea, considering we're going to be fighting chaos at some point. Is there anything else we need to upgrade? Sylvania I still want to try and work on. In fact, Fort Arbenstein, I'm actually going to... Oh no, we'll upgrade that. That's given a nice bit of growth anyway, so I'll leave that. That could be upgraded though. Let's have a look. Wolfenberg is fine. Let's upgrade the barracks. This. This. And hang on. Back to Sol in a minute. Right, let's get rid of that. I'm going to get a growth building in Solent instead. And everything else, let's get one here as well. Oh yeah, one other thing is Paravon has got Helm Guards. Unfortunately, we had it, the Skull Smashers took it, and then Paravon took it off them. And I haven't had the heart to go to war with them in order to get it back. So they're in control, but they are defensive allies of mine, so I'm not that concerned. Anyway, Jean-Peter, let's... No, it's Jean-Peter. I keep remember not to try and say it in a French accent. But uh, in fact, was I going... No, I was going to get you, Scouting. Because we haven't actually got that many magical items for our armies and characters. So I want to try and improve that as much as possible. Okay, Heinrich... I remember um, you want you were supposed to get Imperial Pegasus, so I'll give you that. Victor Wolfsaber. I'm going to give you another point in Scavenge, I think, and Fleet-Footed. There we go. Fritz. This is the Warrior Priest with Cow Ferns. Let's give you another point in Replenish Troops for now. Okay, you unmoved, you moved, you moved. Okay. Let's go ahead and end the turn, see what happens next. Okay, Karakun, what are you after? You want a military alliance? To be honest, I don't really want a military one. Are you willing to give me a defensive one? I mean, that's quite a high chance. Let's have a look. Not as likely. Let's give it a go. Good. More defensive allies are better than having military ones. Just stops us getting dragged into wars. Although saying that, Zufbar, what do you want? You want military alliance as well, and you're actually willing to pay me. Okay, again, cancel that. Let's go defensive alliance. There we go, a little bit of extra cash too, I'm not going to complain. And the more allies we have around our borders, the better. Gitter, what are you about to do? Oh good, I thought you were actually going to go after <laughs> cow fans, but luckily not. Ooh, slandered. So we have caught wind of vicious rumors being spread about me, accusing cow fans of being a secret worshipper of chaos. Oh Christ. Well, what are we going to do? Are we going to spend 1,500 out of our 22,000? 
or we're going to spend 800 prestige out of our 5,000. Let's just spend the money. It's much easier to do. Andreas Boker, we're going to get rid of you, I think. I right, skip for all of that, and let's continue. So something I did want to talk about, as I was reminded about it during the end turn phase, is if I pop out to the wider world a moment and go back to ownership, the fact Batonia has remained quite fractured, but Koreana has not really confederated with the other dukes, but as you can see they have gone out to Albion. The entire island is now under their control, and they've done a pretty good job of keeping it away from the Norskins. So that was pretty interesting. The other thing is that compared to last time, the Hunt Marshal expedition has not been defeated. So they're still doing their job over here in Lustria, but I have no idea how they've done because I haven't sent anyone over there yet. So what I'm planning to do is actually, because so we've got all this cash, we've got plenty of opportunities to spend it is not only build up an army for Balthasar Gelt, but I'm also thinking to send off an army led by Edward van der Kral, the guy that's the faction leader for Marienburg, to sort of lead an expedition over there to find out what's going on and see about our chances of confederating with Marius Wolfhart. So we'll do that at some point, but I've still got stuff I want to spend my money on right now. But the other thing I wanted to check, uh, not with Heinrich, although Heinrich, we need you to do move down here. So we can get that unit of halberdiers. But I need to go after... Who is it? I think it was Valmir's army. So we need halber halberdiers. Thank you. And if we go over towards Castle Van Rankoff... Yeah, I want to check something. Because we've recruited a unit of the Stubborn Bulls. And as you can see, i got another unit here. But I wanted to span this unit because if I pop onto here... We can. So what I noticed is that some of the units, like for example here, the Noble Sons Abroad, have got unit capacity, like you have with the Deliverance tank. But others, like the Knights of Moor here, and the Stubborn Bulls, don't. So I wanted to check when we had the chance to see if we can recruit it, and we can. So we're going to get another unit of the Stubborn Bulls to join off with Valmir. There we go. We've got one more turn for him, and if I head back down to here, two turns for here. Right, and we've got a wizard, um, Tobias the Jack, heading over to join up. In fact, let's get you over there now. Because he's joined up with his companion, Varus Durand, both of which are character submissions. And we've got a unit of flagellants being produced as a accompanying unit for those two characters. So, what I'm planning to do anyway, with Helmet and Valmir, is to actually go through to the Hell Pit and burn it down. We don't particularly need it, and I've had to deal with, I think it was a couple few turns and several times now, with agents building undercities across the, some of my regions, and I just want to get rid of the Skaven. So I'm going to send those two up there to deal with them. We've got Heinrich Nen and Volkmar, of which Volkmar is going to finish off dealing with you guys. But I want those two to go after Heinrich Kemmler in order to defeat the, 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 Bar was it the Barrow Legion, and just to get rid of them. But then I also want to start a war against the Border Princes. Not only do they have Steingards as part of Soland, but I quite like the idea of just expanding down south, and being able to take more territory down there. So, oh, picked up a nice little follower there too. Okay. Volkmar, let's get you towards Fort Burgris. So you can get ready then to go after the Barrow Legion. I need to secure... No, we've already got military access with Artois, so that's fine. And then the you will be ready in what? Three turns, apparently? In fact, it might be easier just to, re to move them around. Yeah. Tell you what, merge you guys. Now. And then we're just going to recruit another unit instead. So I'll have to remember to change their names to match up, but yeah, we'll do that. Balthasar then will give you a new army. We need to give... We need to actually build an engineer's college. I think we can do it in Talheim. Yeah. So we'll need to do this, so we can actually unlock our whites, so we can get our hands on some more steam tanks. Soland, I wanted to make sure that you got your growth build in, so we can just start building up our population surplus a bit more quickly. Alright, anything else to spend money on? Wissenberg. Let's upgrade your defenses. Let's give you 
some more money. I could go for the... Yeah, I suppose we could actually go for the roads. But on the other hand, because of how close everything is, it's really not that needed. But still, I suppose it might come in handy. Might do it at Dotton back. But we'll build that up too. Okay, Grunberg, everything is fine here. In fact, let's build that up. Alright, so let's get Cal Franz now to go after Karagongor. So now that uh, last remaining uh, general was actually defeated by Goris Warhoof, one of the characters, Beast Lord characters introduced by Mixu. So he's somewhere around here, but we'll go after him because we need to... I think I saw... Yeah, the minor settlement for this region is ruined, so we'll be able to go in and take it as well. So let's go and do this. Nice easy auto resolve this time. Lost much more men than we did it when we fought it ourselves. That's okay, we've got more than enough replenishment. And we finished this. So we now just got the battle left to do, which I think I'm going to do now in the next episode. But we've defeated the Red Eye, we've managed to get some more research done. Camp followers. Right. Let's spend our money on upgrading that. We don't need these two buildings in here, so I'm going to demolish those. We'll get a growth building and a public order building, because we're going to kind of need that. Although, come on. Oh, uh, this is because of Gorus. Right. Yeah, we'll go and defeat him next turn as well. Okay, Tars Ludenhoff. You're the character with Volkmar, yeah. Let's continue just giving you full plate armor. Making him into a combat monster. Alright, Kurt, My just move you over there. Rudy, you're sorting out public order, aren't you? But I'm actually going to send you up towards Karagongor. Just because they are going to have a slight penalty, because it's not unpleasant climate. But that will help out a bit. Okay, Vincent, you're staying around here. Now, what to do? I'm thinking actually, just finish off working on my infantry. So we can build up their weapon strength and their melee defense and charge bonus. And then we can start working on the other ones as well. And once we get more money, I suppose I could start working on all of this too. Let's give you state-issued weapons for now, for the defense and charge bonus. The cow fans. Have I done... I need to double check. Have I done your personal battle skills? Compared to last time, I have been working quite a bit on them. Um, we haven't done Indomitable, but I'm not that fussed about it. Oh no, hang on, I missed Blade Master. There we go. I do want to start working though on hit both the other chains though, because just building up like the Emperor's Finest with his own personal stats, very, very powerful now. But we've also been working on Honest Steel to work up his Greatsword and Demigriffs. We'll be able to work in onto these because we've got quite a few characters now. I mean units, which are like tier 7 and higher. So we've got quite a few nice little bonuses. Guinevieve, let's give you... Ooh, decisions. Let's give you another point in the Riverin. Because against low leadership armies, using the Riverin with the Aspect of the Dread Knights is a very powerful combination. So let's just make sure you can cast that a bit more easily. Lufa, I've been working up your personal combat skills, haven't I? So let's give you, again, improve your melee defense a bit. Fritz, we've already done the Replenish, haven't we? Yeah. Not going to give you a war horse. Instead, let's improve your armor for now. Right, that's everything for now. So let's hit enter, and then I'll bring the episode to an end then, because I realized we've gone slightly over. Okay, so nothing to report, let's just get through that, but I'm going to bring today's episode to an end now. Now, don't worry, starting next week we'll be back on track. This should have been coming out yesterday, but I just, I end up falling asleep, to be honest, without realising. And by the time I woke up, it was the early hours of the morning, and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to leave it. But yeah, I think we're in a good position now, and we'll be doing some quest battles next time. For Gal Moraz, we'll be able to start the expansion in against Clan Mulder up to the north and start dealing with the Black, the Barrow Legion, which has got a few things in mind for next time. But, like I said, we'll sort it out then. So for now, thank you very much for watching today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed, and I do hope you join me next time for some more Warhammer. But until then, everyone, take care, and goodbye for now.